Well, I mean, there's always pressure when you get done playing a state, state game the year before. Everybody's counting on you to do it again. You got to come in with an open mind and just play your best that year. But, um, yeah, there's always a lot of pressure after making it to that state, state game. So. Well, I, I think last year uh, was a special year. It was a surprising year. Um, but I think it built um, some expectations. I think it added to that expectation. But I, I don't think that's ever a bad thing. Uh, I wouldn't really call it pressure. I mean, I, I took it more as, like, I don't know. I felt like we had more of an advantage this year than, than last year, especially going all the way to the state. We got so much experience. So I didn't see it as pressure. It was fun for me, not pressure. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there was just a bunch of hype about making it to state and uh, had a lot of ret returning uh, players, especially with Miles and Joey and everybody. Just there were huge expectations to make it back. We lost a bunch of key players, but what we lost, we knew we could replace. And we had Miles come back. We had Eric leading the conference in tackles. Miles. Ready got, I mean, he got all the jitters out last season, so we figured that if we have another shot at going back to state, it was going to be this year. And so, yeah, we did feel a little bit of pressure, I guess. Every year, the seniors say, you'll never be as good as we were last year, so it put a lot of pressure on us. But we got as many wins. We were 10 and 2, they were 10 and 4. I think that we, as a team and as a coaching staff, um, aspired to get back, you know, to, to, to make a repeat and, and to get back to that level. And, while it added some pressure and it, uh, it it kind of upped the ante and upped the intensity a little bit, it, it, it did so in a good way. I think it, it got the kids to work harder and, and maybe even us too. Maybe as a coaching staff we uh, realized that, you know, anything can happen on any given day and, you know, your, your preparation here and now is, is what really makes the difference. Sacred Heart Griffin is always going to be good. They're always going to be prepared. Week one. They're just like everybody else. They're untested. You, you, you never know what you're going to get. So uh, from our perspective, we had to uh, prepare like it was week nine, um, like we were preparing for a team that had that kind of experience. Yeah, we come into week one, we thought if, this is, if there's going to be a year to beat them, we've got it this year. Yeah, I thought that was ours. Uh, it started out, it seemed like, the, it seemed like deja vu from last year. Uh, we had a couple fumbles and got down real hard, but during halftime, I, I think we all realized that it was our game. Definitely just a win, uh, whether it be by 40 points or one point, um, just a win overall. And uh, I think we, if we played the whole game like we did the second half, we would have come out winners in that game. Yeah, you know, uh, we practiced really hard that week, really good practice, and uh, we thought we had it this week or this year, but. You know, we made a couple turnovers and just uh, tried to fight back in that second half and that fourth and one call. Didn't get a couple blocks the way we needed it to. You know, I'd run that play again if coach calls it in, so that's what happens. We didn't get a block, we didn't get a couple blocks, but it's fine. Uh, I still think it was our game. We should have beat them, but what happens, happens. I mean, we were pretty pumped. Like, I mean, we were playing on winning, we always do, and just didn't work out for us. I honestly never thought it'd be that big. It was really, really cool. I remember catching the touchdown and just popping up and being like, wow, this is something I dreamed of when I was little, but it, it was pretty sweet. Yeah, we definitely thought we did. I mean, we were we were jacked. We were ready to go. I mean, the first half was tough, but even then, I mean, we obviously came back and we were, we knew we could beat them. It was just, didn't turn out right. You can always say, what if we did this? What if we did that? Truth is, I mean, if we had Played that way the whole game, yeah. I think we were a little shell shocked at the start, but um, yeah, I mean, you can't have any regrets. I mean, we never really counted ourselves out of it. We we've always been. I mean, it's hard. It's not right to say it, but kind of a second half team. We we strive to be a four quarter team, but there's something about that second half. I don't know our conditioning maybe, but the second half is when we played our best and we came out and knocked. Heads around. It's a hard memory to bring up because how close we got. Like just thinking back on it is it's a bad feeling because we came we were down thirty points at halftime and then we came back and we're one score away. You know, that's one play, one fumble, one interception that if we could have had we could have beat them for the first time in ten years. First off, I think Springfield has probably some of the biggest heads in the CSA and uh, I felt like that helped us because we really wanted to beat them and, and they always say how good they are. 
but we knew that we were going to win that one. Uh, I had no doubt in my mind. Yeah, there was a ton of pressure. I mean, we, as a team, we were so excited and ready. I mean, we, we got that redemption last year in the playoffs, but this year we just really wanted to prove that we were a different team and that we were ready to go. Last year, starting 0-2, uh, after the Springfield game, the seniors got a meeting together, and it was real emotional, and uh, we just we didn't want to do that again. It uh, just was not a good feeling at all. We knew what kind of hole we would have to, would have to dig ourselves out of if we want 0-2. And so preparing for the week, I mean, we want 100%, 110% every day of the week because we knew we couldn't get in that hole and we had to, we had to go one and one not 0-2. Obviously, we felt like the two teams to beat in the league this year would be SHG and Springfield High. Um, left a real bad taste in our mouth the year before when we came out of that 0-2 and, and, and really uh, fighting, scratching, and clawing the rest of the year. You know, I don't think it's the type of thing where, as a coach, you sit, you know, you sit these guys down and you, you know, talk to them about, hey, we don't want to go 0 and 2 like we did last year. Everybody already knew that, uh, and I think what how the kids respond to coaching is that they see the coaches working hard, and they say, okay, hey, you know, coaches are doing their job. We need to do our job. I, uh, I was very happy after the game because we didn't get a 0 and 2 start like we did the year, the previous year. And I, I thought it was a good, uh, a good start for a year. They knew we wanted to beat Springfield, uh, and we came out. And we did what we had to do to win that ball game and, and played well. Well, that, that Taylorville game, you know, Taylorville, they play us pretty tough. They always have. Uh, and I think that that uh, I just feel like really we were a better team, and it was just a matter of us just keep playing. Even though we did lose uh, Eric Kerr, we had some good linebackers coming in to replace him, so I really wasn't worried at all. You know, I felt we did pretty good. Well, you know, if you rem think back to the Taylorville game, it turned into a, a ball game that was a lot closer than what I felt it should have been. Um, part of that, though, I, I think has to do with the fact that Eric wasn't out there. I mean, Taylorville's consistently pretty good, pretty okay, but I mean, you, you can have the tendency to overlook people when you just got off big games like Griffin and Springfield. So we did get off to a slow start, but I mean, we were still learning, we were still a young team, so. We were getting there. there. You wouldn't even know when we were playing football that night. Nobody was hyped up. There was barely any crowd. And it took a, a, an errant pass from me and tipped off Nathan's hands to Shawnee for him to run to a touchdown and to get our team really into it because uh, it was looking pretty bad from there or before then. We lost to Eric Kerr that week. So, you know, it was a big setback for our team and our defense most importantly. But our offense came out flat and we just uh, didn't execute like we were supposed to at first. And then a uh, lucky play gets in there, and I run it for a touchdown, and we start to get the things rolling a little bit and uh, come out on top for the victory. You know, don't panic. Keep playing. Defense started picking it up. Offense started scoring some points, and, and uh, you know, we were able to win that ball game. I mean, with Eric gone, we had to put new guys at linebackers, and just with your leader of the defense gone, I mean, that's going to take a toll. I think we, we found a little bit of... Uh, uh, team pride in that game and, and we found that you know hey when we have to we can go down dig deep and, and suck it up and, and bring it together. Uh, it, it was a real good win and to show that we could come together in the second half and pull away. It's it's always a high tension game I mean last year in the playoffs we won you know by a hair 48-47 so we knew it would be big but um, just same exciting game. It was almost exactly like playoffs last year it was offense it was score 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 and defensively we had to find something. Our offense felt so good that night, and Donovan was running it nice. We were putting it in the air real good. So as an offensive standpoint, you know, we have to look at it as we're never going to get stopped, and, and that's how you feel every night. So the mindset was that we're not going to get stopped. We're scoring every time. And, uh, you know, our defense just had to make the plays and ended up making them in the second half, which really helped out, and our offense kept going. In the second half, we started finding turnovers, and things just started going our way. And, and defense just it had Eric, who was a little banged up, and he played his heart out, so they were motivated by that. And finally, got the, they got stops at the end of the game and pulled that one out. And I think uh, the second half, our defense really stepped up and uh, stopped in a couple drives, and we ended up winning. Uh, you know, they were moving the ball, and they were doing some things against us, but they're actually, we we're, out, we're out there playing with our middle linebacker with a broken leg. So. Uh, I think that's part of the reason uh, that we were a little slow getting going there. But we did come up with a big stop there in the second half, and then our offense put a couple of scores on the board and were able to, you know, get out of that one. I mean, they say defense wins games, and that's exactly true. I mean, Coach Onkin and that entire defense just saved us so many times during this season, and that was one of them.
Well, I didn't want our team to underestimate, underestimate Gateway because we, uh, we, we beat them by a good amount last year, but this year I knew they were a fast team. I knew they had a fast quarterback and a fast running back. So I knew we couldn't underestimate them just because we beat them last year. It's a whole new year. I was thinking, all right, as long as we contain their athletes, we, we should be fine. We should be able to run up the score. We killed them first half, and so we, we went into this locker room thinking, hey, we've got this. Just go out there one more quarter, then we could rest for four. The first half, I, oh man, everything was clicking, and our blocks were getting down, and everything was happening. It took the second half for the offense to turn it over a couple of times. I mean, you get too comfortable with a big lead, and things like that can happen. You can never overlook a team until the game's over. Uh, you know, they're just a very scary team. It's the type of team that, uh, uh, that, that's uh, tough against us. They just had a quarterback who was extremely quick, probably the quickest kid we've played in a couple of years, and that's A couple turnovers, and uh, the quarterback was an amazing athlete, just running everything all over the field, and uh, they got back into it. They just got excited and got fired up and uh, started coming back, but uh, you're right, we had them down. We had them down 42 to 13, I think, midway through the third quarter, and then it, they just they just started going off on us. Yeah, I watched them from the sideline. It was a scary feeling because that was, of course, when I was in my boot, broken leg. It was the worst feeling watching them come back. But I had trust in my defense. I trust in friends out there. I had faith in our defense, but the way they were moving the ball, I really I thought they were going to win. To be honest, I. Our defense came up with that fumble on the 10 yard line, luckily, and. It was just a great feeling afterwards, after that fumble. So relieved. Like, I, I honestly thought we were going to lose at that point because we couldn't stop them. And then, I don't know, just the relief didn't, you can't even express it. So. Total relief. I was so happy. I think it was Brink that knocked it out. I was like, yes, thank you. <laughs> well, I, I actually got so happy. I threw my mouthpiece and then and, uh, lost it. So Brandon gave me his to go out there and take the knee. But uh, yeah, I mean, I was just glad that thing's over and, and glad we were able to move on to the next week without a, the second loss in our book. So it, it was one of those games that uh, we very well could have lost that game, but I think the guys just, you know, they just kept on, you know, make, they made that play there at the end. Had they not made that play, we'd have been in some trouble. Lincoln, uh, I think Lincoln was a big point for the offense to, to uh, Show, people, show other teams we could pass the ball in. Well, I mean, it was good in the perspective of us being able to throw the ball, but also in the fact that other teams had to look at us as a, d a dual threat offense, that now we can pass the ball and they can't put so much pressure on the run. We showed everybody in the CSA that we're going to come out and pass more than we usually have and uh, open things up, which really helped our run game up and uh, helped out our offense a lot. We moved a lot. So, I mean, it did a, did a lot of good. I just think Miles, uh uh, you know, he's just the kind of guy that gets better every week. I think he gets more confident every week. I think he gets more familiar with his players. Uh, he's, he grew up a lot, especially, you know, it helps having the wide receivers like Daniel and Sean and Stokes and Petty. But he did definitely did some maturing from last year. I mean, last year he was a great quarterback, but this year is a whole new level for him. We, we proved ourselves that we could play with Lincoln at, at their field, and uh, it really wasn't as good as we expected, but, you know, once again, winning is all that counts and we've won that game. It was another one kind of like Taylorville. I mean, we it wasn't as pretty as we would have liked, but I mean, you got to keep winning and they, I mean, you got to give them credit. They're pretty good. So we played hard and it, it worked out well, whether or not it was pretty. That was a hard game for me because I, that was supposed to be my first game back. And I got told five minutes before that they weren't going to let me play. So it broke my heart. That was one of the worst memories, not being able to play your senior homecoming game. Big that game was Sean. I mean, Going into the week, we knew that we wanted to work on our passing game, and Sean had been good for us all season, and what Coach was telling Miles all week was Sean's ready to pop, and he did. I mean, he had, I think, three receiving touchdowns that game. Coach called my number a lot that game, and me and Miles hooked up a lot, and uh, it was just a great feeling after those three touchdowns and uh, that many yards. I, I think that, you know, when we get it cranking up, uh, you know, I think over the last two years, we've averaged 36 points a ball game. Uh, and that's, you know, been over, uh, you know, 25 ball games. I uh, hit a couple passes, a couple touchdowns to Shawnee. Uh, one was, I think, a good 30, 35 yards. Uh, really opened our offense up, showed people that we could pass and not just run the ball. Right. Like uh, Sean Dowling starts catching the ball. We're, now, we're, now we're figuring out how to get in. So it's, the whole thing is uh, it's a process and it's a growing process. You get better and better. 
You know, and some teams don't. Some teams get worse and worse. You know, not us. I think we get better each week we play. So it's just, uh, just a good, solid win for our team. Well, Rochester, I mean, that was honestly my favorite game all year. Just because I've got a lot of friends that go to Rochester. And, I mean, obviously, like you said, West Lunt was huge. So we were, we were hyped up. We were ready to go. There was a lot of anticipation for that one. Uh, I've been looking forward to that one. We, uh, as a staff, uh, defensively and as a football staff, uh, have been looking forward to that one since last year. Um, you know, you take some of that personally. Um, we just felt like we had to prepare for them really well. We just had to, uh, we just had to execute. We couldn't let West Lunt just sit in the pocket and throw the ball all day, and we couldn't let Zach Heen get open. So we just had to focus on those players. All right. Well, I mean, we went in, and Thursday we watched Coach had us all meet up in the auditorium. We watched the uh, Boys of Fall music video. I mean, so that was pump let us know that our football season, I mean, it was almost over. It was week eight, and our season was flying by. And we knew that, I mean, we had to go for second conference. We couldn't lose again if we were going to get good in the playoffs. And well, we had to face some adversity that week, and, and a good football team always takes that in stride and, and does all right with it. And, you know, we got through that. We stopped thinking about it. We lost some big players that week. It, 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 was, a, it was the kind of challenge that I like to take on, particularly when you have great kids who want to get on board with you and, and really understand your personal uh, buy-in to it, and, and they buy in in the same way. For me, it was just as big as the first Griffin game. Um, the defense knew they were going to play well, and uh, the coaches put together a really good game plan to stop Wes. It was a challenge. It was We needed to step up, and we needed to do it. Greg stepped up big time. I mean, he shadowed Grant so well and limited him. Well, I think that I, we had a great defensive plan put together. Uh, I think Coach Onkin and the other coaches did a great job uh, with that. We brought Greg out. It was his first start of the year. I mean, here we are in week seven. And, and Greg Roberts comes out, and uh, it's really his his first real action, and we gave him the assignment of of uh, uh, getting on uh, uh, their wide receiver. Uh, you know, when you talk about the the job that Greg Roberts did in that particular game, his one game where he really played a lot, and was asked to play a big key in our game plan, uh, came out and and shut him down, and just offensively. I mean, having played them last year, you know that if you don't score right off the bat, you're going to get down and you're not going to have much of a chance. So we knew we had to score every chance we got. Our play, um, offense, we knew it was going to be a big, uh, big deal. And uh, work set up a good game plan, running the ball and passing the ball. And uh, that really let us come through. They were getting close to the end zone, and I was starting to think, dang, you know, they might score. But then and Nathan Hack, 102-yard interception, that's just unbelievable. And that we really needed that. I mean, that picked us up big time. It was huge, honestly. Um, Hack's interception was amazing. I mean, I was worried they were going to score, and like, I think it would have tied the game up. Uh, but he just ran it back, and I'm like, okay, well, we can do something with this. So that was, that was great. But uh, You know, of course, the, uh, the interception from Nathan Hack, uh, running up the sideline for 103 yards was was special. You know, I mean, uh, I think that kind of uh, that's one that'll stick in my mind for a long time. What a huge play! They're going in to score, and they're thinking they're getting back in the ball game. He intercepts and goes 103, which really put the icing on the cake. Just excited, just pumped us up even more, and just we we're doing good, doing our job, and just ready to go. Yeah, to see our players make plays like that is incredible. It's just. It just like, you know, it just really it makes, makes, brings a smile to my face, you know, to see players do that. And uh, I, just, I was just really happy about that. So we came out knowing once a good quarterback, Division One, and we shut him down. I mean, we had three interceptions in the first half. He could not pass the ball. We locked down Grant, and it was just great. You know, you look at that and you say, hey, this is a team that won a state championship, and this quarterback had four interceptions and three of them were against us in that particular night when we beat them. It meant a lot to us. It meant a lot to our, our defensive staff, Coach Hay and Coach Edgar, because we sat and worked and worked and worked and, and threw out all kinds of different ideas outside the box. And have you guys ever looked at it this way? You guys are the only team that's ever beat West Lawn in his high school career. I've heard that, and I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> First team to ever beat, only team to ever beat West Lawn varsity, because the only other game they lost, he didn't get a play. So that's something to hang your hats on. I'd rather say the only team, you know, to beat West Lunt and uh, because it took the whole team that night and, and, and that's how it's so cool. I have that 
clipping actually saved. So when he's, you know, doing whatever he's doing in the future, we can say, Chad and Glenn, we got you, you know. No, I, I just, uh, I'm glad we won the ball game. Uh, I'm glad we were able to beat Rochester, who, you know, later went on to win the 4A state championship. So I'm very proud of that. But, uh, you know, I don't know if I have any special feelings for being the only team that beat them. I wasn't surprised that we beat him, but I was very happy that we were. I, I knew we could beat him if we had really, if we played well, if everybody did their job and everybody just, you know, played to their fullest ability. So that game showed us what kind of talent we had, what kind of ability we had, and uh, most certainly gave us a positive springboard to go on and, and look and say, hey, yeah, we, we can go back. We can go deep in the playoffs again. Yeah, I, think we're, well, I think we're a pretty good football team at that time, and, and uh, I thought, yeah, the future looks bright. Uh, you know, you, uh, you not only beat a, a Rochester team that was a very well-regarded team, but you beat them at their own game. Well, the last game of the year is always a, a, a scary one for me, I think, because it's against Lanphier this year. Next year it won't be, but, you know, a team that doesn't have anything to lose, they're going to play their hearts out just like we are, but they can fly in and hurt our people, but they don't have anything to play for next week. In, in a Honestly, I mean, we didn't know what to expect from Lanphier from the beginning. We knew they would be fast and athletic. They always are. But, I mean, we were just ready to go and play our best because, I mean, we needed that win for a good playoff berth. So Donovan got banged up that week, didn't play for the next two games, and, and Gabe got banged up that week. And Well, it was, it was a trap play to the right, and I actually thought it was going to be a touchdown. It was wide open. Uh, so, um... When I was coming through, I kind of messed up on my, my uh, footwork when I was coming through, but when I, some guy, one of the de defensive ends, had tackled me, but he, he pulled me down and my foot was caught in the ground, and that just ended up causing my ankle to be sprained. I mean, honestly, I, I didn't think Donovan's injury was that serious at the time, but I mean, it does, it did hurt us in the long run. But. Okay, point. Well, at the moment, I didn't know how long I was going to be out. I didn't think it was going to be that bad until I had to get the crutches, and then um, Coach Weiser wanted to send me to the to the hospital as soon as possible. But at that point, I figured uh, I was just kind of disappointed that I might miss some of the playoffs. That's about it. I was, I was really scared, honestly. Um, going in the playoffs, I was worried, especially with being in the uh, south bracket. It's a lot tougher because there's um, more, I think there's two number one seeds instead of the north, there's one. So I know there's a fewer, fewer pool, or smaller pool to play against, and it's a lot tougher your first round. So I was worried. but. Um, he was able to come back uh, later on and help us. I mean, I, I was just disappointed and stuff, but like, and I was hoping that it wasn't that bad, but I mean, I was focused on the game mostly, but after that, we were just hoping it wasn't as bad. Well, we, well and we did. We had guys stepping all up all, uh, all year long. Brandon Montre did a great job for us at halfback. Uh, uh, Joey Giovanelli came over from the defensive side. Uh, broke the record for for uh, yards per carry. Donovan is tough to replace. He's our go-to guy. He's our main offensive running threat. Those other guys are playing defense also, uh, but Brandon and, and Joey and, and, and Nathan and our offensive line picked up. Uh, you know, everybody picked up a little bit. It shows heart, you know, senior year going down, especially with something like that going into playoffs. Especially, they told us that he probably broke his ankle in the game, so everyone's like, well, yeah, there goes first round of playoffs. But then for them to keep trucking and keep trying and work, that made them work even harder, and then they stepped it up big time. Yeah, I mean, it was tough because we knew Don had been pounding the ball all season, he'd be working, and it was, we almost felt like it wasn't fair that he had, he got hurt week nine and he was out for the first few weeks of playoffs. And so we were playing, me and Brandon were in the backfield playing, knowing that if we keep winning, Don's going to have his chance to come back. And so that kind of sparked it. But we also knew that we needed to hang on and get Donovan back. And, and that's what we did. You know, we came out with a win, but all in all, I, I wouldn't say I had the greatest time at that game because we lost two key players. Well, we didn't lose Gabe, but he was banged up the next week. But we played a nice game. I mean, Yeah, there's always motivation when you get in the playoff time, you know. Nobody wants to go home after that first that first uh, playoff game, and uh, so as seniors, we really stepped up and tried to play our hearts out. And as Carbondale showing us disrespect by wearing their home jerseys, that just motivated us even more. Yeah, I think they were they were a little bit uh, over the top, a little bit. I think that you know, uh, you know, they, they they came out with a little bit of a, a show of disrespect for us, uh, and I think all of our guys saw that. 
a, a week a week before that game, uh, their coach called Rourke and asked him if they could uh, wear their black jerseys. And he said no, just because it's a respect thing for our field. And, and then when they we saw them come out with them, going into the locker room, I've never seen the guys more pumped up. Just that, that's just a slap in the face. You know? Just to see them walk in with their black uniforms, it was kind of like they, they thought they were better than us. Like, they came in thinking, hey, we're going to wear our black uniforms and you can't do anything about it. I mean, that really did get, get us kind of riled up at the beginning that, you know, they had the audacity, I guess, to wear their home jerseys to our home field. So that did get us riled up a bit. We knew we were going to take it to them. Like, we weren't going to let them come in there and wear their home jerseys. So I think that really, that really pissed off the coaches and I think it really pissed off our team also. So, you know, we definitely had to beat them. To me, when you go in the playoffs, you, you, earn, you earn a home field. And if you're the home field, you wear the home jerseys. You don't, you don't go on the road and wear your home jerseys because that's what you think you ought to be able to do. And as a coach, we may have been a little bit more uh, fired up about the, the disrespect uh, than the players were. But obviously, the players understood that. And, and that's what I talked about before when I referenced the fact that uh, you get players who buy into your emotion and, and, and into your, uh, you know, taking things personally. Those players start to understand you, and, and you're around them so much. And, and when you get players who care about what you think and what you feel, um, it's a great combination. I mean, that was their own fault. I mean, I don't know why they would even try that. That just gave us more motivation to beat the crap out of them, which we did. And uh, you know, they. For them to do that, and even ask Coach Rourke, and, and he said no, it, it really motivated our team to get going and put it on them, which, I mean, they were terrible, so that's the only team I won't give any respect to. I thought it was kind of funny. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure why you care to wear your home jerseys or not. I guess they superstition or anything, but either way, it didn't work out for them. So. <laughs> and, I mean, home field, playoffs, we weren't just going to let it happen, and we crushed them. I mean, and I think our guys you know, took care of business. I think they uh, explained themselves quite well through the four quarters of uh, 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 mayhem that we delivered towards them. Well, first off, we were going up to Wesleyan, which was their, was supposed to be their home game, but I think in actuality, uh, since we go there every summer, it felt like we were at home because we had been on that field a number of times. and. I was ready to play, you know, ready to come in any time, but my thoughts during the game was, this is a good test for our team you know, to go through the playoffs, because I know the teams are going to get harder as we go through. That really, that game was a, uh, a team effort overall. Um, the offense did a great job. Our line, I don't, something about playoffs, but our line always picks it up in playoffs. I mean, they were doing great all season, but playoffs, holes were everywhere. I mean, it was like Swiss cheese out there. <laughs> and the defense did a great job. The defense uh, had to shut down another quick quarterback, uh, really contain him. You know, a great player, really a great player. And, and, and they have a nice program, they have a nice team. Um, once again, though, I, you know, I'd have to say our offense put us in a really good position for the most part and gave us an opportunity to be off the field in some critical times. Well, I, I really think our defense played pretty good that whole ball game. The, uh, 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 exclamation point comes out on that last drive. You know, I was sitting there, I was like, all right, we got to get a stop. It's fourth down. You know, I have enough nerves as it is. I'm tired, beat, beat up and everything, playing on turf. You know, I was on my knee. I wasn't watching. I had uh, Grant tell me what was going on again, like he always does in pressure situations, because I don't want to watch. Uh. I just, I saw the back come out of the, um, come out of the backfield, go to the right. I'm like, oh, they're going to run a screen. And then I see all the linemen go the other way. I'm like, crap. I'm the wrong way. I, I hope somebody's over there. My first thought was I didn't see Eric. My first thought was, oh, shit, he's going to score. And I see one guy just trying to sneak out by himself. And I go, nope, nope, this isn't right. So I go sprinting out there. Next thing I know, the ball's in the air being thrown to him. Had, luckily, I had Nathan hacked a corner him with me. And we both just kind of dove on top and then laid there for a couple minutes. Curves right there. I look towards the sideline. And then I'm trying to do like the measurements in my head. Is, he, is it first down? Is it not? And it stopped. I'm like, yes. Thank you. <laughs> just again, relief, just to see him make that tackle and get up and that ref saying first down, our ball, just a big relief. That was, I mean, amazing, big stop again. I mean, Eric, second round last year even, made that interception in the end zone at Jacksonville. So, I mean, he, he came up big when it mattered. That was probably a, a, a very satisfying uh, point in time for, for me personally, um, but, but more because I wanted the team to be successful, you know.
that, that stepped up and gave us our 10th win. And, and once you've played, um, you know, in, into that level, it, it's, it's pretty nice. It's a pretty good feeling. He got that stop and it game over from there, and, and that's the best feeling you could ever have. Great game to win, especially at Westland. Taking it in that we finally won. It's a crazy game. At first it started out so well, and then back and forth, back and forth. Honestly, I don't think we looked past that game at all. Uh, it, they, were, they were really good, and it came down to the wire, but everybody played hard. Um, we had some big catches from some big receivers, some big plays. Kerr at the end making that tackle. It was just huge, just great team effort. Our whole team Sunday was just beat up and bruised and none of us wanted to get off the couch. But Eric was happy, I mean, <laughs> saved the game. <laughs> that thought of Griffin comes in right after that, that bell sounds. Um, and overall, just a real good game for the team. So, and for us to come out with that win, it was very, it was very uh, pleasing. They were a good football team and, you know, we were able to, to uh, make that play at the end and win the ball game. That comeback we had in the first week, we figured, you know, we were the better team. And this time we figured if we play them, let's not get behind. Let's try to stay up the whole time. I mean, when you're in the playoffs, I mean, you, you kind of have it in the back of your head that you could, this could be your last game ever. But even when you're, we were playing Griffin, just I, that thought never really entered the front of my mind. I was this whole time, we were all just focused, ready to go. Um, whether or not we lost, we knew we were going to have a great game and just play our hearts out. Yeah, I think this team played, uh, they played at a high level all year long. You know, first half of that first ball game was we were a little slow getting started, but if you look past that, you know, and uh, we, we, we pretty much were hitting on all cylinders for most of the season. I think it was, I think it was fairly high. I mean, whenever you play SHG, there's this mental barrier sometimes um, that that's tough to get over. Um, but I think we, f we figured we could definitely play with them. And I wanted to play SHG. We wanted to beat them. That's, I don't know, that's one, like a championship in itself, beating them. Yeah, you know, we were trying to build on uh, the first week uh, after that game, and uh, we just tried to come out and come ready to play. Oh yeah, well I mean we watched film from week one and we knew that hey, we made too many mistakes first half, but second half we really played and we knew that we could play with them and that we could even beat them. We felt confident that we could do some things and, and make some adjustments that would put them um, in a challenging situation. And, and if you look back at that game, while we never, we just couldn't get off the field. You know, we couldn't make the big play on third and five. We couldn't make the big play on third and nine. We couldn't make the big play when we were going to have a chance to turn the field around. Uh, it wasn't like we were, they were just gashing us and, and, you know, taking big chunks of yardage at one time and uh, scoring and then, you know, we'd go out and, and scratch out what we could. That, that, you know, defensively, I thought we played a good control game. But unfortunately, uh, like I said, we just couldn't get them off the field at those critical times. We couldn't turn the field around. We couldn't get a stop, make them punt into the wind, get a short field, give our offense a chance to go score. And that makes it tough. You know, that, that makes it difficult no matter what. But what, when it came to, down to the game, we just, I mean, I don't know what happened, but everything that we had set up just wasn't working. They were running over us. We couldn't stop it. I think we started to get frustrated at each other and that just made us play worse, and we just kind of lost control of the game. Unfortunately, on that given night, that given day, we played a pretty good football team who just didn't make mistakes, you know, didn't, didn't get penalties, didn't fumble the ball. Didn't win the ball game. You know, uh, that's the thing about football. You know, you go out there and you play hard, and you get after it, uh, and, and, and you're ready to hit, and you're, you're ready to do everything it takes. Just doesn't mean you're gonna win. You know, maybe other teams, uh, maybe they're bigger up front. You know, maybe there's some other things that are going on that, that uh, you know, others might not see. But, uh, you know, they're a good football team. So, uh, you know, we weren't able to beat them. But uh, I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not upset. I wasn't upset with the team at all. I thought they gave uh, their best effort. Second half, we, we did finish. Um, all offseason, coaches talk about finishing. I think we did. We finished the season strong and I really showed that we have Titan pride. To this day, I, I still think we should have got them that game. Uh, they did some things. I mean, we, they, we knew what they were going to do coming into the game, but it just came down to playing hard, playing gritty, and the, we, didn't get, we, get, we didn't get the third down conversions that we needed to get and, and all that, but it hurts. It's still good looking back on it to lose to the team.
that you know, your most rival, they knock you out in the quarterfinals that you want to go to state, and it's not a good feeling at all. It's hard. Uh, I mean, you just, uh, every, seniors always tell you, like the past seniors will tell you, hey, watch out, it, go, it flies by, and you're like, yeah, I mean, however many, 12, 13 weeks, 14 weeks, whatever you're going to play, that's a long time. It's, it couldn't fly by. But next, it's, next thing you know, it's week 12, you're playing in the quarterfinals, and you're thinking, wow, this is it. I mean, this is the last time I'm be on this field. This is the last time I'm with these guys. And it's just kind of, at the second you lose, it's just kind of hard to get a hold of, and you can't really grasp it at that time. It's just overwhelming. Definitely bittersweet. I mean, more bitter at the time. But, I mean, you realize afterwards that, I mean, just such a great career, you know, going to state junior year, making it to the quarterfinals. I mean, that's even impressive in itself. And I mean, uh, although it was extremely painful you know, from the beginning, knowing that you would never put on those pads again, um, it was just, you're proud, and I'm proud of what this group of guys has done together. Uh, well, you know, we always say it's like Vegas at Wesleyan. What happens in Wesleyan stays at Wesleyan, so it's always a fun point with the team. Every, every year we have Wesleyan. I mean, you can't really talk about it like Vegas, what happens at Wesleyan stays at Wesleyan. It's a team bonding thing. I'm not sure. Uh, coaches are probably going to see this, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, probably people have already said uh, GP and the GB. GP and GB. That was always a fun time, and I'm not going to elaborate on what that means, but most of the players will know that was pretty fun. I mean, we have coach impressions at team dinner on senior night, and some of those are pretty good. Gabe Phillips does literally the best Coach Crossan impression I've ever heard. I was dying laughing. Gabe Phillips. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness, that guy is so funny. You should probably consider a stand-up comedian or something. <laughs> but yeah, that was a lot of fun too. Uh, all the team dinners, all the memories, you know, all the inside jokes we had, it was just, it was just a good year. Definitely uh, team movie nights at Eric Kerr's house, especially during the playoffs. Um, I remember after we watched Black Hawk Down, you know, the whole whole team was, you know, chanting USA, USA. And then we ended up having a big, like, fight, just like wrestling match in the basement because we were so jacked up about Black Hawk Down. But, and that was right before the U High game, too. So we were, I don't know, th those are great memories. I'm never going to forget that. All right. Football practice all in all, I mean, as, a, as just being there with the seniors that aren't going to be there next year, I'll really miss them. I had a great time with them, and, and I knew they played hard. They played, they fought every minute. And I love knowing that, being able to play alongside those guys, it was really an honor because there's some great kids in there. For me, I'm going to miss the seniors a ton, uh, same as last year. I mean, they always, when I first got here, they definitely uh, were very welcoming, took me under their wing. I know John and Joey started lifting with them in their lifting group, so it was great. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm going to miss them a lot. Miss uh, Ethan Adams, for sure. I mean, everybody, uh, just a lot. But. Just remember, I'll just remember that we will, we'll never have this team again. You know, we had a great uh, bunch of guys, and you know, they were all fun to get along with. They were all fun to talk to, and they always they're always looking to have a good time. But they're a very dedicated team, also. And I can just look back on that and say we had a real good team. So it was a great season. Uh, I don't regret any of it. You know, I, I good luck, and and I'll really miss you guys because you guys have been there from the start of my career. And uh, there's some key guys that, uh, I mean, that you can always look for this year. We always look for the guys that knew we knew would step up, and they always stepped up. So I, I, uh, it, it was really an honor playing next to them, and I'll miss them a lot. And that are waiting to be seniors for their senior year of football, uh, definitely don't take any of it for granted, and uh, just really uh, enjoy every moment of it. Coaches and players, thanks for everything. None of us would be where we were without any of them. You know, we grew up together. We've all been playing together. And these coaches the last four years have really done a lot for us. And then for the juniors, just a minute of it. I've been through it. People say, oh, yeah, whatever. No, it's the worst feeling in your life when you have to walk off that field for the last time. I mean, seniors, I love you guys. You're my brothers and stuff. Coaches, I want to thank them for everything they've done for us. They've put up with us for four years. I mean, I realized we probably weren't the easiest to work with. And so I'd like to thank them for that. And juniors, I know. We've told you this a lot, but it really does go by. Week one and two, you're thinking it's still week one and two. This is going to take a while. I've got time. But after that, it flies. Next thing you know, it's week 12. You're sitting on the field. The game's over, and you're just there with the guys knowing you're not going to play again. So relish it. Keep working hard and go get it. Get, em, get SHG next year. Uh, 
beat SAG, beat Rochester, and go get that state championship that has been almost there every year. To our senior players, I'm, I'm proud to have been your coach. Uh, I speak for the other coaches. With, you know, uh, one of the classiest bunches we've ever coached here in 20 years. Uh, and I say that a lot. We have a lot of great teams come through here, but this one right here this year, 10-2 and two team, marks up with the best. What a great ride it's been. They've had an outstanding four years. Um, many of them have uh, given me memories that will never be replaced, obviously. Um, be champions all the time. You know, that's, that's huge. And I think that these guys have shown that they're champions. Um, they, they may not have a conference championship to show for it, and they may not have a state championship to show for it, but they're championship people. And I think it's so, so important that they know that their presence here and, and what they've done during their four years here at Glenwood um, is vital to the continuation of a great tradition and, and building on that tradition and, and challenging the future kids to, to live up to that kind of uh, uh, success. And uh, so for me, I, I just tell them thanks for the ride and you know, good luck and come back and see us.